One of the persistent undercurrents of the entire film is the theme of colonialism. Both the kingdom that Namor leads and also the kingdom that Shuri will ultimately lead face a colonial threat. In the very beginning of the film, you see world global powers calling Wakanda to UN convenings and saying that you promised that you would share your resources with the world. And at the time, Queen Ramonda responds that while we certainly understand that that was a commitment that we made, we are fearful of what would happen if our resources fell into the wrong hands. And there was literally threats that were happening to Wakanda and some of his outshoots across the world, some of his outposts, where foreign entities were trying to steal vibranium to create weapons of mass destruction. And so in many ways, that mirrors so many of the imperial and colonial efforts to try to mine Africa of, of its resources and disregard the people and the wishes of the people and potentially even cut up the continent and create new borders. And then similarly, Namor and his people created a kingdom in the ocean to escape the threat of colonialism. And they come back to the surface and realize that the land that they once occupied had been dominated by the Spaniards and they, they were enslaving the people that they had previously come from. So the indigenous people of the Mesoamerican um, plain, so to speak, were being conquered by the Spaniards. And they had escaped colonialism in that way, and they hid from the rest of the world for centuries to escape the threat of colonialism. And now that the world had discovered that there was vibranium in the ocean, it becomes a threat to this entire underwater civilization that it had existed for centuries. And so in many ways, we see the global threat of colonialism in North America and in Africa playing out in fictional ways that oftentimes has mirrored real life colonialism as well. One of the beauties of the Wakandan people finding an ally in the world was that you saw these two different people groups learning that their similarities were greater than their differences. And they even go to war with each other too. And they get to the point where they are on the brink of mutually assured destruction. And their leaders have to say that we are stronger together than we are apart and that their common good was greater than their competing interests. And I think that is a hopeful message, not only for our country, but for the world. 